Looks like an average day at work, right? Well, yes, but for whom? If you're not constantly alert, before you know it, your average day can turn into a dangerous, hazardous materials incident. Chemicals are everywhere. Any chemical can be or become dangerous if it's not stored or handled properly, its container is damaged, it's mixed improperly, or it contacts other substances, including the air we breathe. Although local fire departments regularly handle minor incidents involving hazardous materials, sometimes hazmat situations become too large or difficult to manage. Therefore, additional resources may be needed. That's when HURT is ready to help. The Western Wayne County Fire Department Mutual Aid Association Hazardous Incident Response Team. Members of the HURT team receive special training in handling hazardous materials emergencies. HURT's goal is to assist local fire departments in safely mitigating hazmat incidents. When you need help with a hazmat incident, call the response team immediately. In 1987, fire chiefs from 21 communities established the Western Wayne County Hazardous Incident Response Team and agreed to provide firefighters from their respective departments as team members. Based on their level of training, these members are assigned to either a technical assistance group or a response group. They receive extensive training in hazardous materials and function at all levels, including operations, technician, specialist, and incident command. Emergency personnel trained at the basic operations level of training handle many minor releases of hazardous materials every day. At the operations level, confinement activities such as isolating the scene and creating barriers to keep the substance in a specific area are considered defensive measures. To take offensive measures, you must have technician or specialist level training and appropriate equipment to deal directly with the substance. HURT offers three levels of response. Technical assistance group, technical assistance group with a response group, and a full team response. Team members are trained in chemistry, computer research, hazardous materials handling, identification of shipping containers and transport vehicles, confined space operations and rescue, risk analysis, code enforcement, and most importantly, safety. Special training with chemical analysis kits and air monitoring equipment develops skills to identify unknown chemical products. One of Hertz's primary goals is to ensure the safety of the public and on-scene personnel. Here, 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 when I call your name, stay here. Lonnie Lawrence, Bob Wilson. As the world becomes a more complicated place to live and work, equipment to handle hazmat incidents has also become much more complicated. Today's hazmat teams must be prepared to deal with any one of thousands of hazardous materials that may be present in our communities. Most emergency response equipment is geared toward detection, identification, confinement, and containment of hazardous materials. To deal effectively with the wide range of chemicals and potential incidents, tremendous effort is involved in learning about hazmat equipment and the many containers and vehicles used for storage and transportation of hazardous materials. At least once a month, the team trains in both the classroom and the field. Exercises with local fire departments allow team members and firefighters hands-on experience to prepare for emergencies. Whenever possible, actual operating sites in participating communities are used, and local emergency response personnel become an important part of the training. Full team activation, including the technical assistance and response groups, is simulated, so host departments learn what assistance is available to them. During the simulation, as in a real emergency, Incident management assignments are made for several tasks, including safety, decontamination, research, entry, supply, and command. No matter where the incident occurs, the local fire department incident commander is in charge and oversees the coordination of local personnel and hazardous materials responders. These simulations allow the team to evaluate multi-agency unified command, communications, and operations, 
Lessons learned are applied in future training and incident operations. When hurt assistance is requested, the necessary equipment is sent to the scene. Air supply and mobile command units are also available for support. The command vehicle provides radio and telephone communications for multi-agency contact and coordination and can assist as the central processing point for information. Personal protective equipment for responders is a high priority. No universal suits exist to handle every chemical, so an extensive inventory of sizes and fabrications is necessary. Once on the scene, the necessary level of protection is determined and the essential equipment to meet those needs is chosen. Every suit is rated for specific chemical compatibility and length of exposure. The cost of the suit directly relates to the number of chemicals it can safely handle. When ready, the team members enter the site, evaluate conditions, and gather samples for analysis. Detection and identification of a hazardous material ranges from simple to complex. Therefore, equipment used by the team may be simple, like a pH paper, or complex, like a special monitor or a complete field lab for detecting specific or unknown substances. So when do you activate HERT? Anytime you have an incident where you suspect or know that you have chemical involvement and need additional resources or expertise beyond the capabilities of your local fire department. Although internal policies and procedures may differ from one department to the next, the HERT activation process is the same for all. When you need assistance, Information on the HERT activation request form needs to be obtained by the local incident commander and transmitted to their dispatch center. Instructions for the activation process are included on the form. Then each municipality can either activate the HERT team from their internal system or they can notify the Ypsilanti Township Fire Department. It's extremely important to follow the instructions on the activation form to ensure a timely response. Information requested on the form includes details about the type of incident and location, hurt resources needed, chemicals involved, and wind direction. All are critical for accurate messages transmitted over the paging system to hurt responders. Once on the scene, hurt becomes part of the incident command structure with a team leader reporting directly to the IC or officer in charge. Stabilizing the scene becomes a coordinated effort between the local IC and the hurt members. In most hazmat incidents, unified command of several agencies is established to coordinate the individual responsibilities of various departments, such as police, public works, water and sewer, road maintenance, and other groups which may be called upon to mitigate a hazmat incident. Unified command offers the opportunity for all departments to work together to handle a dangerous situation safely and effectively, and to apply the lessons learned to future incidents. In addition to emergency response, the Hazardous Incident Response Team can offer technical assistance and additional resources to local departments for inspection duties and for small or non-emergency chemical incidents. Since it's much easier and less expensive to prevent a release of hazardous materials than to deal with the consequences of an emergency, your community can evaluate potential hazards and anticipate dangerous situations by requesting technical assistance from the team. All kinds of chemicals and hazardous materials surround us each day. We must be alert to potential dangers from mishandling and accidents. Whether it's a minor release, a major hazmat incident, or assistance in planning and assessment of possible chemical hazards, the Western Wayne County Hazardous Materials Incident Response Team stands ready to help.